Okay, so here we are again. We're back here in the church of Locked Up and Locked Out. But I appreciate any time that you might give maybe to catch up a little bit of reflection, a reminder, at least that we're connected, at least metaphysically through this medium. And again, I, I thank Kevin for his time today. As I've told you so many, many times before, most of my life as a priest has been lived in, in Philadelphia. And I've lived in a number of parishes. I worked in a, in St. Cecilia's for five and a half years in the Cancer Center. I was in North Philly at Holy Child for a year. I was in South Philly twice, once five, once nine. You know, and it was a great experience for me living in the city. But, you know, I grew up in the city, and I, I knew it. I talked yesterday about the buses and the trolley cars and how just that was just very much a part of my life. But when I lived downtown in South Philly at the Annunciation, we had a guy that worked for the parish. Uh, he was a... Uh, his dad was a carpenter. He was kid, kid was good with his hands, but he worked in the business venue for a while, for a couple of years. So they decided to get out of that, and wanted to spend full time for the church. So he became the church sexton. He would open up in the morning. He would close at night. He would get ready for weddings and funerals. He would play the organ. So if you need somebody to play for a wedding or funeral, Joe was always available and ready to do that. Eventually moved on, and he's been at St. Rita's on Broad and Ellsworth for about 25 years now. I see him sometimes when I go down and just say hello to him. In fact, many years ago, he and I took a trip, went out to Montana, the two of us, because I had never been west of Harrisburg in my life. But anyway, we went to Montana and spent about 10 days out there going through Yellowstone and all the other businesses. It was, it was a great trip. It was really wonderful. But Joe used to do the floral arrangements for the, for the church. And so what happened was uh, he was very, very good with flowers. So there was a place up in uh, uh, around the Germantown section of cities called Pennock. It was a wholesale florist distributor. And Joe used to get the flowers up there. It was all like raw stuff, you know, pieces of this, a piece of that, and then he'd come back, pull that stuff together. And he would make these magnificent arrangements for like Sundays and uh, Bless them all the feast days for Easter, you know, Holy Thursday. It was just magnificent stuff, absolutely just magnificent. So anyhow, uh, Joe's telling me about all this business, and he said, listen, i got to go to Pennock. We're getting ready for, like, Palm Sunday or Holy Thursday, one of those things. He says, I need to go to Pennock. I said, that's great. He says, uh, would you drive me up? I said, sure, I'll be glad to go out with you, you know. I said, what time do you want to go, like 8 or 9? He said, no. He said, it opens at 3 in the morning. He said, we're up there by 3.30. I said, 3.30 in the morning? He said, yeah. He said, you got to get there early. All the florists are there. I said, sweet mother of pearl. I said, all right, okay, I'll take you up. So uh, he came down to the rectory. He lived about a block or two away. And uh, up in the choir we go and drive up there in the dark. And uh, I walk into this factory, this great big warehouse, and there must be 100 150 florists there, and the n number of flowers. I mean, just they imported all this stuff from South America, you know, all that stuff come in in uh, planes and uh, was brought up there. And it's all spread out. It's a daily, daily chore. And these florists are running around picking up these arrangements that they want, all the batch of this, batch of that, batch of that. And I'm like, go for it. I'm going around with the golf cart, you know, or the, the cart just putting, tell me, what, grab that one, grab this one, too much of that. And put it there. So we go back all to the rectory. And at first, I had, I had like a 7 o'clock mass or something. So I just went up and changed my clothes and whatever, church, da 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 Joe said, I'm going to go start working on this stuff. So he had a little workroom down in the basement of the rectory. So I go down about 10, 30, 11 o'clock, and he's down there. He's got this arrangement. And what he did with these flowers was just incredible. I mean, just absolutely gorgeous what he would do with this. So much so, I, mean, I want to take a picture of some of that stuff. It was just beautiful. And I said to Joe, how do you do this? I mean, how do you know how to do all this stuff? I said, this is incredible. He said, uh, well, there's a secret to it, but it's not really not a secret. I said, well, what's the secret? He says, he says, the most important flower that you put in the arrangement is the first one. And that's the one that's got to be in the middle. And then what happens is you build up everything else around the one that's in the center. So once, once you choose the one that you want to, to be highlighted in the arrangement, that's the one that goes in the center. 
and then everything else just flows. So I'm watching this side, this side, and all of a sudden, like 35 minutes later, you look and say, voila, beautiful. But it's always about the one in the middle. I never forgot that story. So what this has to do with our life? Boy, that's a real simple point to make. It just simply means that if the most important person in your life, the most important person that's ever touched your life, or influenced your life, if he's the center of your life, if Christ Jesus, the Lord, is the center of your life, then everything that surrounds the center will have the beauty of Christ reflected in it. And so if our Lord is there, then what happens is the presence of Christ will be reflected in the way I think, the way I talk, the style of my life, my decor, my interaction with other people, the way I do my daily work. Christ, if he's the center of my life, he is the one that gives me direction to everything that makes me who I am, or who at least I want to be. And when the when the when the when the floral arrangement is is complete, you can look back at that and say, "Wow, that's gorgeous." And if if that if that happens in my life, then what happens is I can people can st I can step back and people can look at my life and see something that's unique and special about me that is reflective of just the beauty and the will of God. And you know, people are jealous of that kind of stuff. But people see nice people, and they say, you know, I wish I could be more like that. Or, you know, that person's really special, because there's something really special about that person. You know what that special stuff is? It's Christ yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The beginning and the end of everything that makes me me. When he's the center of my life, everything that I do is nothing more than a mirror reflection of the image of our Lord. Never forgot that one. Okay, folks, we'll check you. Uh, we'll check you tomorrow. Okay, everybody's doing well. You're not going too crazy. You know, I just there's a new thing about wearing masks now, so you gotta be careful. All right, talk to you later. Bye bye.